Welcome back. Now we will solve some exercises using bit level instruction in the letter diagram. So let's understand first various buttons which we see in our letter diagram editor. So if you open the software again, here you will see several buttons. So let's go through these buttons one by one and we will just stick to the context and coil as of now. And then we will progress through the lessons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to maybe remove this one. So here, let, let's just remove all the letter. So you can select and remove letter and remove everything. So now first thing is how to add a letter. In this case, you will see a button here, the first one. This is used to add a new rung. So you have already letter here. You just add a new rung and then you have a rung here. And in this new rung, you can define if it should be letter logic or if it should be instruction list. Okay, we stick to letter logic. And now we let's say we write the first contact we can take it from here just select this button and select again here and then you have this contact and now I need one output this I can do it check from here so this is my NO contact and my direct coil okay this is how we designate that if you take your mouse over here you can see some coil and you, here we see negated coil I will come to that negated coil so here you have NO contact and there you have negated contact NC contact we also call it so this NO contact, you can write the address. We have known that from before. I write 01, and here I write Q0.0. So that's how you add a rung. Now, if you want, want to add another rung, you can click here, and here you will see it says add a new rung, and there's another option, insert a new rung. So what is the difference? When you add it, it will come below it, and if you insert it, it will come above it. That's the only difference, okay? This you can also do by right click on the rung. You can say add a rung, it will come on the bottom and insert a rung, it will come on the top. What you can also do is you can copy paste the rung. So I can right click, I can copy the rung and then I paste the rung. So I have the same rung one more time. Just save some time. If you, if you have most of the logic same, you just need to change the contacts, okay? That's how you can add a rung, copy paste the rung and if you want to delete the rung, you can just press the delete button. But if you want, I press control set to come back if you want you can also delete from here delete the wrong okay two ways to delete that now this is my no contact and you know how this program works i will turn this one on it will turn on my output but what if i want to add something in parallel to it parallel contact in this case you will see an option here this is by default normal mode no branch this is the branching mode so select this one and bring your mouse here and take the contact which you want to branch next to it Let's just take uh, this, take this contact and branching mode is on. It will automatically show an icon like this. Okay, and click on that. Now it is in parallel. Then I can also write I0.2. Okay, let me change the symbol of that. The symbol doesn't make sense. QB N01. QB N01 is unknown. Y is unknown. All right, so this is like how you can connect in branch. Similarly, you can also do it for the outputs. So in the output, you have right now one output. If you want another one in the parallel, you are already in the branching mode. Select the output coil, and then you will see it automatically shows that you can connect in the parallel. And then you can give the output 0 0.1. Okay, now I have two inputs connected in parallel and two outputs also in parallel. Let's download that and see the result. So I go to login. Download to controller and jump back to programming. So I'm sure if you are familiar with PLC programming, you can actuate any of the input. It will actuate both the outputs. Okay, that's the that's the logic. Let's go to plus. And now let's try this. At on first input, I have two outputs on. Second input, I also have two outputs on. You can see it on my trainer. You can see it on the PLC program. All right, super easy. Now, very interesting part, if you want to force the input as a, inputs and outputs, okay? In case, if you don't want to turn on from the outside, if you want to force it from the software, you can also do that. You see, when I take my mouse there, you will see F0 and F1. It's force false and force true. So if I take, take F1, now you can see that it's true, but I did not press the button. And here you can see F is mentioned here because this is forced. 
So you can also force your input directly and then your output will be on. I can take out the force again and now it will come back to my normal mode. I can also click force true and then I can also click force false. When I click force false, this doesn't mean the force is gone. The force is still there. And when the force is there, and if I actuate from the trainer, it will not work because I forced it to be false. I'm forcing it to stay false, <laughs> okay? So whatever I do outside doesn't matter. So I have to take out the force, and now the forces are gone. There is no F here. Now I can use normally my input, okay? Similarly for the output, you have here zero and one. So let's say if I make it one, it will go back to zero again because of the logic. The logic doesn't say that it should be one. So I cannot make it one. Similarly here, I can't make it one because the logic does not allow me to be one. So this zero and one is not forcing. Remember, zero and one is just writing. It's not forcing. Let me see if I can show you in animation table. So here I take Q0.1. Zero, zero is already there. And here you can see four status as well. <coughs> So if I force my input now, force one, you can see this will show here force because this input is not taken, I0.2. So this is force to one, so you can see the status here, so I can make it remove. So what I want to show here is if I take another input, output, now this one, value. So this output I'm not using in my program, but I can send the value here to one. Now if I do here one, it should normally Turn on my output. Okay, 0, 03 is not connected, 0, 02 is connected. So let me just bring it back to 0. 0, 02 is connected to my lamp. Green one, now if I make it 1, you can see my lamp is on on my trainer. Because I'm not using this output in my program, I can write the value. Okay, I can make it back to 0. Otherwise, I can force it. I can force my output to be 1. This will now force it to be one. It will not depend on the logic before. You can see my output is on on my trainer, red is on. And here it is also showing force to one. So you can do force only if it's only necessary. If you wanna check something, you are checking the IO status, inputs and outputs, you can force it, but don't force it if you don't know what you're doing, okay? Just remove the forces. So that's what I wanted to show you, how you can force the input and output. You can also do that in the simulator as well. And this is how you can write uh, logic in parallel input and output now what i want to show you is let's just go log out this was normally open okay i will remove this one and i remove this one you can also take normally close contact so instead of normally open if i'm more normally close for the same addressing i can just select this one and bring it here it will override the contact addressing will remain the same now what happened if I take normally closed, if you are familiar with programming, let's download that. And download the control. So with normally closed, when the input is not true from the outside, it's not pressed, input, input is not pressed. In inside, it will take the reverse status of that. So from outside, if it's false, inside it will be true. You can see that here. I can click on play and uh, this was normally close contact so the signal will be true the output of this contact will be true and it will actuate my output that happens when you take normally close contact okay one more time from the outside the button is not pressed so my i01 is not pressed so let's say if it's not pressed it's false okay but inside we took inverse that's why it's true and actuate my output now if from outside if it's true from inside it will get false and deactivate my output. This is one way to understand that. So this is how you can use NC contact. And another way to use NC contact is if I want the same result without changing this contact, I keep it normally open, but I want the same result. I can negate my output. This is another way to do it. So let's see what will happen. Let's go to the login and download it you can see my output is going to be on when I run the PLC 
So now my input is false in my VLC program. It will not actuate the output normally, but because my output is negated, let's go to run mode, you can see it's true. It's true because this is false. This should be false, but it is negated, so false becomes true. That's why my LED is on, okay? That's why it is called negated output. It will take the inverse of the normal coil operation. So this is what I wanted to mention in this slide. So we have seen how to add a rung to the ladder program, display comments, I told you already before, labels, understanding NO, NC, direct call, reverse call. So that's how you can use these different kinds of uh, instructions in your VLC program. In the next video, we will do some exercises. We are going to solve some Boolean algebra equations using ladder diagrams. See you in the next video.